Hello and welcome to another accounting tutorial where today I'll be showing you which errors are not disclosed within the trial balance. Now if you aren't fully up to speed with what the trial balance is then please do watch my previous video which goes through what the trial balance is and how it's prepared. I'll leave a link in the description for those who'd like to give that one a watch. Now the trial balance is a great tool to be able to check for errors within an accounting system. However, it is predominantly a mathematical check and what I mean by that is it really shows any errors that cause an imbalance within the system. So quite simply put, it shows whether your debit entries do not equal your credit entries. What does that mean? Well, there are a number of errors that could occur within an accounting system which are not highlighted by the trial balance. Let's have a look at the possible errors which could occur that are not disclosed by the trial balance. First off, we have an error of omission. Now, an error of omission happens when a transaction has been entirely missed from the accounts. This could happen when an invoice has been forgotten and therefore not entered into the system. Now, your system doesn't know that you've got an invoice on your desk waiting to be entered. It only shows what has actually been entered. Therefore, running a trial balance wouldn't highlight this error if it were to occur as it wouldn't cause an imbalance between your debits and credits. Next on the list, we have an error of principle. Now, an error of principle describes when a transaction has been entered into the wrong type of account. A good example of this could be motor vehicle expenses being entered into the motor vehicle's account. The motor vehicle's account records the purchase of an asset, in this case, motor vehicles, whereas motor vehicle expenses should go to the motor vehicle expense account. We know that both these accounts, i.e. expenses and assets, should have an expected debit balance and both increase in value with a debit entry. Now, the system would not be able to recognise what should go to an expense account and what should go to an asset account and therefore would not cause an imbalance within the trial balance and therefore not be disclosed. Then we have an error of commission, which is very similar to an error of principle. This occurs when a transaction is entered into the correct type of account, but the wrong account. An example of this would be rental expenses being put to the insurance account. Both are expense accounts and therefore behave in the same way in our system, but the system can't distinguish what should go to the insurance account and what should go to the rental expense account. Yet again, because there isn't an imbalance within the system, it would mean that the error isn't picked up within the trial balance. Our next error to look at is the error of original entry, and this is where the wrong amounts for a transaction have been entered. Let's imagine that a business has received an invoice for £4,500 for business rates. When entering in the invoice to the system, you've accidentally typed in £4,200. Now the system will post the double entry correctly, as long as we've selected the correct accounts, meaning the double entry will still be entered in as a debit for £4,200 to the rates account, and a credit within the bank for 4,200. Although both amounts would be wrong, the trial balance wouldn't pick this up as the debit and credit column would still match up. Now our penultimate error to look at is the compensating error. And this occurs when there's more than one error within the system and the errors just so happen to tie off against each other, making the accounts balance. So effectively an example being 100 pounds too high on one transaction, 100 pounds too low on another transaction. Now this is less likely to happen, but still feasible. The last error to examine is the error of reversing entries. And this describes when a transaction has had its debit and credit entries reversed when being entered into the system. An example of this could be entering insurance as a credit to the insurance account and a debit to the bank. We know that this transaction should be entered as a debit to the insurance and credit to the bank. Now, because there has been an equal debit and credit entry, the trial balance wouldn't pick this up as the error still means that the debit and credit columns would balance. Now, the final part of this video is to look at some examples and identify whether the error shown would or wouldn't be disclosed by the trial balance. And if they wouldn't be disclosed, then what type of errors are they out of the options we've just been through? First on the list then, discounts allowed has been entered into the rent and rates account. All other entries were correct. Well, firstly, we know that discounts allowed is an expense account and rent and rates is also an expense account. Therefore, if all other entries are correct, 
this would not cause an imbalance within the trial balance and therefore would not be disclosed. In terms of the type of error, well, we've already said that both accounts are expenses. With this purely being entered into the wrong account, it would describe an error of commission. Next then, sales returns has been entered onto the wrong side of the account. All other entries were correct. Now this would be disclosed within the trial balance. If only one half the entry has been entered on the wrong side of the account, that would mean either two debits, or with this being sales returns that's been entered in on the wrong side, two credits. Remember, if we don't have debit entries equal to our credit entries, that will cause an imbalance within the trial balance and therefore be disclosed. Then we have insurance for £1,400 has been entered into the system as £14,000. Now, because it doesn't state anything to the effect of only half the transaction being entered was wrong or anything of the sort, we can assume that it's the entire transaction that's been entered in as 14,000. This would therefore not be disclosed by the trial balance, as there would be an equal debit and credit entry, albeit for the wrong amounts. This would not cause an imbalance and therefore not be disclosed. The type of error this would fall under would be an error of original entry, as both figures were entered in incorrectly in the first instance. Our penultimate error states vehicle expenses have been entered to both the vehicle expenses and bank account, but both have been entered on the wrong sides of their respective accounts. So effectively what's happened here is that both the debit and credit entry have been switched around. So rather than entering this transaction in as debit vehicle expenses and credit bank, it's actually been entered in as credit vehicle expenses and debit bank. Now again, we need to ask ourselves, will this cause an imbalance in our debits and credits? And the answer to that is no, because the transaction has had its debits and credits reversed, there would still be an equal in debit and credit entry, just the wrong way around. And this type of error, fairly self-explanatory on this one, would be an error of reversing entries. Last on the list then, a loan repayment has been entered onto the credit side of the loan account. All other entries were correct. Now the double entry for a loan repayment would be debit the loan account, reducing the amount owed, and credit the bank account. In this example, the loan repayment has actually been credited to the loan account, and all other entries being correct, meaning that the bank entry has been credited. So what's happened here is that we've ended up with two credit entries resulting in an imbalance within the trial balance, and therefore it would be disclosed. And that wraps up our example and brings this tutorial to a close. I hope you found it useful. And remember, if you have, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more accounting videos. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.